I think you are going to enjoy this calcul art. We are going to make music from equations. And I'm using the term music in a very, very loose interpretation. Uh, actually, we're just going to make sounds from equations. But let's be optimistic and call this music. So the basic idea is that we are going to simulate equations like this. Often we'll have uh, sinusoidal components and the variable will be t for time. And then we are going to make these uh, fluctuations in the function, so the y-axis values of the function, map onto the frequency and amplitude of sounds, which we can then convert into audio and listen to and download. Okay, so um, again, with all these calculars, uh, if you want to do this on your own, that's great. I fully support it. If you don't feel like putting all the effort into it and you just want to follow along and check out my code, that's also fantastic. This is your opportunity to enjoy and not just to learn calculus. All right, so uh, I'm going to begin by creating a time series, variable y, and it's just the sum of two sine waves. This is a middle C and this is the E on top of it. So just two notes. Uh, and I'm summing them together for a uh, time vector going from zero to three. And then this is going to be in seconds when I simulate the frequency of sampling. So the sampling rate at 41.1 kilohertz, pretty typical sampling rate for uh, digitized audio. So just be mindful of the differences between these two terms. These are um, F for frequency. These are in units of hertz. Uh, and then this is f of s, this is a parameter. This corresponds to the sampling rate or how many times per second we have a data point, a sample. So 41,000 times per second, we sample this function to generate this time series. So how do we actually make sounds in Python? For that, we can use the scipy.io library and uh, yeah, so, and there we're gonna use wave file. So there's a function in this library. This is for uh, writing these uh, variables out to create a wave file that you can download from uh, Colab and then uh, have on your local computer and email to your parents or whatever you wanna do. Uh, and then I'm also going to use ipython.display import audio. And this is a tool within IPython that will allow us to play music from the computer uh, sound system uh, directly from the IPython notebook. Okay, and uh, of course, in a moment, I will show you how to implement these. So uh, then once we have the basics down, what we want to do is create dual channel sound. So that means that there's this sound wave going into the left ear and this sound wave going into the right ear. So we're gonna hear different functions in the left ear and the right ear. So I will also show you how to do that. Uh, then to uh, write these data to a file to download onto your computer, you need to scale the data such that the smallest data value is minus one and the largest data value is plus one. You can do that using this formula. If you have taken uh, a course, for example, my course on statistics and machine learning, but in any other machine learning course, you might come across this function. This is generally called a min-max scaler. So it scales the data y. If you leave out the two and leave out the minus one, then this result here, this ratio here, will scale your data to a range of zero to one. And then the idea is we scale it up by two. So now we have data that range from zero to two. And then we subtract one to get data in the range of minus one to plus one. Okay, and then, uh, yeah, we just organize the two signals left and right into a time by channel matrix or NumPy array. And then, yeah, I will show you how to, uh, how to create a file and how to download it to your computer. Okay, great, so now I will switch to Python. You can follow along with me using the code that you've downloaded from the GitHub repo. Importing the typical libraries that I uh, almost always use. Uh, and here is, yeah, these two additional uh, functions that I mentioned a moment ago. 
Okay, uh, here we're going to make a simple sound. I have the sampling rate, 41, uh, 44.1 kilohertz. Here is the time vector. I go from zero to actually uh, not exactly three. I'm taking one sampling rate off. That gives me exactly three seconds in total because here I'm starting at zero. So this is very slightly different from what I showed in the slide, but that's okay. Uh, here are the two frequencies that I'm specifying in Hertz. And here is the sound. So I have the sum of two sine waves where each sine wave is defined as the sine of two pi ft and for these two different frequencies. And then we can play it using this function audio uh, with this sound variable that I created here and the sampling rate that I have defined. So I hope you can hear this. Now, whether you would call that music is uh, a matter of scholarly artistic debate, but clearly it's fairly straightforward. That's the most important point here. Uh, we just created a, a, a collection of sine waves, just a little signal, and then we could play it through the computer speakers. Okay, here I am separately specifying a right channel and a left channel. So into the left channel, and if I had earbuds on, this would be in the left ear. This is going to be the sine of 2 pi ft, so that's just like what I had above. And here on the right channel, so going into the right ear, this is going to be uh, the sine of 2 pi f2 times t, and then I'm modulating it by a slower sine wave with a frequency of 2 hertz. So this is going to create an amplitude modulated signal. And then I'm uh, playing that, so we just input uh, the two channels as a list in this case, you can also input them as a NumPy matrix. I'll get back to that in a moment. And if you are wearing headphones, I don't know if it's going to come through my computer and then your computer in uh, each ear, but uh, maybe it works in stereo, maybe it doesn't. Even if it didn't work for you in stereo, I think you could still hear the reverberation resulting from this lower frequency modulation. Okay, here is where we are going to write it out. So in order to, uh, or this wave file uh, function assumes that the numerical values are normalized to between minus one to plus one. And that is what I do here. This is the normalization factor. This is for uh, writing out just one channel, and here is for writing out two channels. You can see that has the same normalization. So we can run this, and this is just to uh, confirm the actual numerical values that we get here. Now, what happens to this WAV file? Where does it go? If you are working on a local installation of Python, this will just appear in whatever folder you're working in. But here on Google Colab, this file is still stored in the cloud. So we can go over to this menu option on the left. We see for folder, and here we have the, these two uh, WAV files that I just created here. So you can click on the, the three dots menu and download. And then this will download to your downloads folder or wherever it goes. Okay, and then, yeah, this is just to show you. Here we have, this is time points by channels. Now there's no channels for a mono channel uh, recording, uh, or there is one channel, but uh, we, in terms of data organization, we can just store it as a orientationless vector. Here we have time by channels. Now for CalcularC2, we are going to separately create uh, amplitude modulated and frequency modulated sounds. These are just different ways of changing the characteristics of the tones over time. Whether we're, we're changing the volume, so the amplitude, or the frequency, which is the pitch. And of course you recognize these two terms from the two radio uh, organizations. So we have uh, AM radio and FM radio, and this is the mechanism of the two. Now there's a much longer you know, engineering discussion to be had about the differences between these, when you would prefer AM uh, versus FM and so on. Uh, I'm just gonna stick to the fun stuff here. So I'm going to show you code in a moment that basically just implements this expression here. So the AM, mo the amplitude modulation is going to be uh, basically a cosine plus the natural log of 
of the time variable. And I'm going to start simulating time uh, negatively. So this is going to be symmetric. And yeah, these are just some parameters that I thought was nice. This is just a tone here. So Y, this is the sound that we are going to listen to. Uh, if you forget about the A for a moment, you can see it's just a pure tone at 440 hertz. And then I'm multiplying it by this vector, and this is going to modulate the amplitude, which is going to be reflected in the volume. So you'll hear what that sounds like in a moment. Here's for FM sounds. This is a little bit more complicated to generate uh, uh, frequency modulated sound. But you can see we still just have a cosine over time as a function of frequency. The difference here with FM, uh, with frequency modulated sounds, is that we integrate over this modulation term over here, which I'm also setting to be a sine wave. So basically the frequency is going to fluctuate up and down over time uh, with this uh, BW parameter. This is for the bandwidth of the uh, modulation, how much of the pitch gets modulated. Okay, so now I'll show you what that looks like in Python and we'll listen to some more amazing music. Here I generate the, uh, a new time vector compared to the previous signals we were creating. This one goes from minus pi to plus pi, but using the same sampling rate. Here is where I implement the uh, amplitude modulation. So you can see we have the natural log of the absolute value of time, variable t. Here I'm just adding a little offset just so we don't run into issues when t equals zero and we try to take the log of t. What I'm doing here in this line is normalizing the uh, AM modulation so that it is scaled between, uh, this would scale it between zero and one, and then I multiply it by two. So this is gonna scale the AM, the amplitude modulating factor by, uh, or, or to a range of uh, zero to two. Okay, and then I just multiply that by a sine wave. Here I will visualize what the AM uh, component looks like, and then we can also listen to the sound. So it's a little bit subtle, but if you follow along visually, you will hear over six seconds, that's this time span here, that the amplitude gets smaller, uh, so the volume gets smaller, and then it goes down to zero, and then it goes back up again. Okay, so it's a bit subtle. I hope you were able to hear it. Uh, here's the code for the FM modulation. I have the carrier frequency and the bandwidth parameter specified here. The modulating signal, and here, of course, we can use the cumulative sum function in NumPy to approximate the integral, which is used in here, in the formula. And this is going to be a little bit more noticeable than the uh, amplitude modulation. Okay, so it sounded like some, you know, 1960s sci-fi movie with space aliens and spaceships and so on. Now that we have a lot of code set up from CalculArts 1 and 2, we can start exploring and having fun and playing around. So I call this CalculArt, make some mathy art noise. I really, I, I can't call this music. It's really starting to get to be noise. So these are just some fun parameters that I played around with. Uh, the FM component looks like this. You can see there's also this uh, natural log of T uh, part here. And the AM component, basically, uh, the sound will get louder over time and then quieter over time. So let me show you what that looks like and also what it sounds like. Okay, here I call this, and now for something weird. This is the FM part and the AM part. And basically, I'm just uh, putting those two pieces together. And here is what that sounds like. Again, that sounds like some wacky 1960s sci-fi computer stuff on a spaceship going to some other planet or something. CalculArt 4 is for you to do. I want you to take the code that I wrote as the starting point, as inspiration to help you 
go crazy and be creative. You can try different math functions. You can try using the function for the frequency modulation and the integral of the function for the amplitude modulation. You can have the left channel be just the same as the right channel or very similar, but delayed or slightly modified, so delayed in time. For example, it starts maybe 100 milliseconds later. Uh, experiment and have fun. Please do not take this seriously. Uh, we have enough serious stuff to deal with in the rest of the course. Uh, if you're happy with the sounds you created, post them to the Q&A. I would be so curious to see what you have come up with. And of course, if you get really, <laughs> if you really uh, do great with this, publish on Spotify and get rich. Okay, that is unlikely to happen, but you never know. Okay, I hope you enjoyed uh, this adventure through creating music from math equations.